So the exhibition really um, was triggered in some ways by, of course, the invitation to show covering letter, which the Frist saw at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. But I think the fact that the Frist Museum building itself um, was an erstwhile post office and there's still a functional post office in the same edifice, I think was really a trigger for me to think of the epistolary mode, the letter writing as a, as a or correspondence as a kind of central image within the exhibition. So the exhibition title, Return to Sender, essentially has two works. One is called Covering Letter Terra Nemnansis, which where we are standing right now. It's essentially a coming together of sounds and images, which are what one might describe as currently being in interstellar space, 13.5 billion miles away from planet Earth and hurtling away from us at 17 kilometers per second. These are likely to outlive us as a species, outlive our planet, and are likely to be the only evidence and summary of our existence on Earth. So these were images uploaded by NASA onto the Golden Record, composed by Frank Drake and Carl Sagan in 1977. And uh, the exhibition is a coming together of a map, which is meant to indicate, as believed in 1977, our location in our immediate cosmic geography based on 14 pulsars. But we now know that there are not 14 pulsars, but a billion pulsars in our neighborhood. So clearly no extraterrestrial will find us on the basis of the return address that begins the exhibition in some ways, but also begins, I think, this conversation about our own incertitude and provisional address in the world. Um, the 116 images that make up the work are essentially not the exact 116 images which were uploaded because in 1977 there wasn't that kind of computing capacity. So these images were encrypted as tiny sound files and it was hoped that based on a few codes an extraterrestrial should be able to decode those images. But um, these images come from the decodings of those sounds by a California based programmer named Ron Barry. And it's a coming together of these sounds and images that I think open a bigger question about, you know, what does it mean to really speak to the unknown, you know? I think we've arrived in a world where left can't speak to right or Republicans can't talk to Democrats and Hindus can't talk to Muslims. And, and I think we've come to a world where there's an absence of vocabulary. So what is this vocabulary that one can speak with to the unknown, to the afar? And when one does speak to this, uh, the sense of the other as the unknown, what does that do to the sense of self? Do we then arrive at a kind of single planetary sense of self that uh, that's an image I think we are all looking for in some ways, you know, in this, in this highly divided world. Um, from covering letter, Terranum Nancias one then enters this other, the predecessor to the work, which is covering letter, a work from 2012, which is essentially a letter written by Mahatma Gandhi to Adolf Hitler. Uh, five weeks before the onset of the Second World War, uh, urging him to rethink his ways in the world. The only word that recurs twice in this letter is the word friend, and it's within this sort of parentheses of this word friendship that the rest of the letter kind of unfolds. Um, I mean, in some ways for me, at the heart of this work is the space that I think the self occupies today, moving through this letter, which is essentially a correspondence from one of the most you know, well-known proponents of peace reaching out to the most brutal perpetrator of violence on that planet at that moment in time. Um, and, and I think that um, a third space through which one can enter this is, I think, for me, at the very heart of this work.